Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, I welcome you to the lecture number 29, uh, which is titled as Cultivating Happiness with Signature Strengths, uh, Part 2. So, this is second lecture of module 10. Uh, so, in the last lecture, that is lecture number 28 also, we talked about <coughs> uh, how the, the relationship between well-being and, uh, and using your character strength or signature strengths. Today also we will uh, keep talking about uh, the uh, concept of signature strengths with a little bit different focus. So, before we talk about today's lecture, uh, let me have a brief recap of the uh, last lecture and the concepts that we have discussed. So, in the last lecture, we uh, discussed uh, the concept of psychological strength as some built-in capacities that we have in terms of thoughts, feelings and behaviors. And uh, uh, we have discussed that in the literature of psychology, if you look at uh, the concept of strengths, psychological strength, you know, uh, there are different approaches uh, that, you know, researchers have, uh, you know, used in order to classify and understand psychological strengths. And uh, in that context, we have discussed one particular approach, which is called as VIA classification, which means value in action classification of uh, strengths uh, developed by uh, Peterson and Seligman. And uh, in that classification, we have discussed, you know, basically, basically that classifies correct, they use particular term called as character strength uh, in order to, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of connote the idea that, you know, certain strengths of characters which are kind of morally desirable, which connotes the idea of moral goodness. Uh, are very important for our ha happiness and well-being and they have, uh, there are many benefits associated with them. And uh, this classification uh, uh, includes the idea of virtues and character strengths. And we have discussed virtues are basically core moral characteristics such as wisdom, you know, such as humanity and character strengths are specific, uh, you know, mechanisms or specific processes, psychological processes. Uh, that defines those virtues. So, these are more like sub dimensions. So, VIA classification uh, uh, included six broad virtues and there are many uh, character strengths under each of these six virtues and in total there are 24 character strengths. So, we have discussed in detail about all these things. The six virtues basically includes wisdom and knowledge, courage, humanity, justice, temperance and transcendence. So, uh, so and each of them have, uh, you know, the, the, there are many uh, specific character strengths associated with each of these uh, virtues. And now, research shows, you know, that uh, various character strengths are associated with many indicators of uh, happiness and well-being and performance also. Uh, particularly, research shows uh, uh, the char character strengths that are, that are associated with heart qualities, you know, and which connects with other people such as gratitude, kindness, love. Uh, these are more strongly associated with our experiences of well-being and happiness. And uh, uh, there are many such findings, you know, we have already discussed in the last class. Uh, we at the end we have also discussed that you know character strengths you know can be cultivated uh, by parenting, schooling, uh, through socialization, and uh, also it can be promoted by exposing to positive role models 
and frequently using them in our day to day life. And research also indicates that you know uh, sometimes uh, character strengths can be developed spontaneously automatically uh, when people encounter certain uh, you know, traumatic events you know uh, very significant uh, especially the traumatic events uh, uh, then people many times you know develop certain character strength after facing those traumatic events or struggling with, the, with, with those traumatic events so these are some of the ideas that we have discussed today uh, we'll uh, continue discussion of character strength using another approach which is called as you know gallop strength finder or clifton strength finder so this is another approach of looking at uh, human uh, psychological strength but the approach is little bit different from via classification that we have discussed and uh, uh, here uh, we'll focus a little bit uh, more on the concept of talents and strengths so today uh, some of the concept that we'll discuss are you know gallop strength finder or clifton strength finder we'll introduce what is that we'll discuss what is the difference between talent and strengths uh, then we'll talk about benefits benefits of developing strength from this perspective uh, then we'll talk about gallop study of top achievers and what are the important findings they found uh, by studying top achievers and at the end we will discuss how to develop strength from the perspective of this particular approach so let's see uh, the details of these concepts now gallop is an uh, american management and consultancy company uh, which was uh, founded by george gallop in 1935 and this organization is uh, primarily known for its large scale surveys that it conducts across the world across different cultures uh, and so primarily it is known for this kind of research activities so two researchers uh, from uh, this organization gallop organization their name uh, names are clifton and anderson in 2001 uh, they tried to understand uh, or attempted to understand what makes people excel in what they do by interviewing thousands of top performers across the globe so they tried to understand you know uh, they studied top achievers in different fields and uh, the objectives that they were interested in understanding is that you know what makes some certain people achieve or excel in their areas of activities Uh, so that was the objective that they were trying to understand so through this research you know they come to this concept of you know signature strengths or you know uh, the concept of different strengths that are found among human beings so we we'll look into their findings and what are the strengths that they uh, found out of this research so out of this exercise uh, they came up with 32 most prevalent talents and strength displayed specifically in the work setting so there are, this particular approach is more concerned in the work setting and if you see the via classification that we have discussed in the last class it was more about strengths that are related to certain moral aspects or morally desirable qualities which could not certain moral goodness uh, this particular approach is more concerned in the work setting and it is more concerned with the concept of talent that we will see how it is connected to that and it is uh, it is more you know um, it is not it, it is it is not much more cons- not much concerned with the concept of morality uh, but more concerned with the concept of talent so out of this exercise and research they found about 34 important talents and strength that are very important in the context of work setting they have conceptualized strength in different ways than via classification their concept of strength is little bit different as i have just mentioned uh, it is not very focused on the moral aspects it is more focused with the concept of your inherent talent that people show in certain dimensions so what is the difference between talent and strength this is one of the basic idea or core idea uh, on which you know this whole classification is based so according to uh, clifton and anderson 
the basis of strength is a talent. So, whatever strength people display, you know, it comes from the talent. So, foundation is talent and from talent people develop strengths. So, this is the main idea. What is a talent according to them? Talent is a naturally recurring pattern of thoughts, feeling or behavior that can be uh, productively applied to a multiple areas. So, basically it is a capacity to do, do something. So, talent is again you know more like you know certain capacity which are you know naturally occurring within different individuals you know. So, those capacities which are naturally inherent in human beings uh, they can be called as talent. So, one may have you know talent for let us say music, one may have a talent for critical thinking, uh, one may have a talent for creativity. So, many people are kind of you know those talents are there in inherent within them. So, those uh, naturally occurring uh, capacities that we all have, uh, they, they, they are called as talents. A strength on the other hand is the ability to provide a consistent high level performance in a given activity. Strength on the other hand, it is based on the talent, from the talent we develop strength, when we are able to use that talent consistently and for high level performance in a given activity. So, when we are able to use the talent, refine those talent and use them productively, consistently for better performance, then that talent becomes strength, you know. Further they said, strengths are produced when talents are refined with knowledge and skills. Strengths are produced when they are refined. So, talents are more like raw thing, raw abilities that we all have and when these talents are refined with knowledge and skills, they become our strengths. So, they further say it, talents are like rough diamonds and strengths are like polished diamonds. So, talents are like rough diamonds, it is still not polished, it is they are naturally occurring, you know. Uh, under the earth, but when you polish them with a lot of instruments, you know they become like shiny and it you know they are more refined. So, strengths are like those refined and polished diamonds. For example, one's ability to make instant connection with people can be a talent. Some people have a talent to make instant connection with other people. So, this may be a, his natural ability, you know. Some people are like that, you know, they are very uh, instantly they can make connection with people. So, this could be a talent, but the ability to consistently build a network of support who know you and are prepared to help you is a strength. But how do you use that talent? Are you able to use that ability to connect with people, you know, to build a proper support network and maintain a proper relationship with them, you know. And so that you know you can kind of you know uh, uh, get benefited from this support network that is a strength so you have a talent to connect with people but it may go waste if you are not able to polish it properly and you know use it in a proper way in a productive way and to build networks of people and make proper connection and healthy relationships uh, so just ability to make connection may not help you in in any way if you are not able to maintain that relationship and polishing that ability, you know, to build support network and get support from them. Uh, if you can do that, then your talent is converted into a strength. So, there are some other uh, two more related concepts, which is called as skills and knowledge. So, we have talents, skills, knowledge and strengths. So, let us see what are the uh, what are the differences among them. So, according to Clifton and Anderson, knowledge consists of facts and lessons that we learn. So, whatever factual things that we learn from our environment or from textbooks or whatever it is, that is a knowledge, factual information that we all have. Skills are basic abilities that we acquire to perform activities. So, skills are basically certain abilities, you know, um, that we learn to perform certain activity. 
skills. For example, riding a bicycle, you know, we learn the skills to ride a bicycle. So, we need to learn it. So, that, that is a skill. Talents exist naturally within each of us. Talents are like, you know, some of the natural abilities that we all have to make instant connections, ability to communicate. So, these are talents that may be very naturally occurring in us. However, skills and knowledge needs to be acquired. Skills and knowledge, you need to do something to acquire knowledge or skills, you know. You need to make efforts and learn them. Skills and knowledge are combined with talent to create strength. So, when skills, knowledge are combined with your talent, it becomes a strength. So, this is their idea. So, they gave an analogy. As a rough diamonds are naturally found in the earth, so we find rough diamonds. When people uh, you know, dig earth and find diamonds, naturally occurring diamonds, they are generally rough diamonds. So, talents are like rough diamonds, which naturally uh, you know found within us, naturally occurring things. As rough diamonds are refined and polished with blades and other instruments. So, when we get those rough diamonds, we refine them with certain instruments like blades and other instruments to polish them. Similarly, strengths are produced when talents are refined with knowledge and skills. So, knowledge and skills are like instruments which helps to polish the talents and convert it into a strength. So, we can show it like this. This is uh, the basic way of representing their ideas uh, from this approach that when skills and knowledge are combined with talent, it becomes strength. So, this is the formula, you can say it is a formula like this. So, talents are more like naturally occurring. capacity, capacity or cities, naturally occurring abilities that we all have. Knowledge basically includes facts and lessons we learn. Skills are basically, you know, abilities we acquire to perform activities. Combining all this gives you strength, which gives you an ability to provide consistent high level performance. in a given activity. So, this is uh, the basic idea and uh, the differences between associated concepts uh, related to strengths. So, concepts such as talents, knowledge and skills, this is how they are connected to each other. This is the difference between them. 
and uh, so these are important concepts that we, we need to understand to uh, to uh, to basically know the basic ideas of this approach or gallops strength finder so according to this approach you know there are uh, certain assumptions about human nature so they uh, proposed six principles of human nature and behavior in this particular strength based approach so according to anderson so there are six principles of human nature and behavior that are associated with strengths these are you have a group of talents within you so every human beings they all they have talents certain uh, number of talents group of talents we all have certain number of talents or group of talents within all of us so it is there so naturally occurring uh, abilities that we all have so this is one principle second is your greatest talent holds the key to high achievement success and progress at levels of personal excellence so your greatest talents that you you you, you have it is the key to your achievement you know how do you use your greatest talents whatever talents you have how do you use them that is the key to your achievement key to your success key to your progress in life third principle is becoming aware of your talents builds confidence and provide a basis for your achievement so once you become aware of your talent you know awareness about whatever talents you have many people are not even aware so awareness of your talent you know it promotes building confidence and it is a basis for your achievements in life so awareness of your whatever talents you have is very important because it promotes your confidence and achievement in your life fourth principle learning how to develop and apply strength will improve your level of achievement so if you if you become aware and also learn to apply your talents or strengths then uh, it will improve your level of achievement it will your achievements in your life will increase fifth principle is each of your talents can be applied in many areas including relationships learning academics leadership service and careers most of the talents uh, that we all have can be applied in diverse contexts of our life such as these talents can be used uh, or talents or strength when we are we are using talents and strength basically same thing when refined becomes strength so sometimes you know we are using strength or talents in the, you know in in, in a similar way so each of these talents or strength can be applied in many areas of our life including in you know, our relationships learning something in your academics leadership in your job situation services careers etc as you develop six principle is as you develop and apply strengths your achievement will increase and you will experience greater and more frequent successes as you slowly slowly become aware and learn to use your talents and strengths you will slowly slowly develop them mu much more more and more as you apply them and accordingly your achievement will increase and you will experience greater successes and fulfillment in your life so these are some of the core principles they said are associated with finding strengths within us so what are the benefits of developing strengths according to clifton and anderson some of them some of these benefits we have already looked at according to them more specifically the development of strengths has many benefits such as you know it promotes achievement if you develop your strengths and use them more and more in what in different context achievements are likely to follow more 
So, it will lead to a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. When you use your strengths and talents, it gives you a lot of satisfaction because you, it, you feel competent. You feel a sense of ability that you have uh, because an achievement will also follow. So, it will kind of give you more and more sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. So, that satisfaction fulfillment will enhance your quality of life also in terms of your experience also and when achievement comes your outer quality of life will also increase. It will increase your confidence and sense of optimism because success, uh, success are more likely to follow once you use more and more strengths. So, it will uh, build your confidence as well as optimism for the future also. Individuals gain uh, more when they expand effort to build their best talents as compared to when they spend comparable amount of efforts to remediate their weakness. What is this point is saying is basically you know we are more likely to gain when uh, we invest in developing our talents and strengths. Okay. When we expend efforts to build our strength and talent we are more likely to gain more in our life in various sense as compared to when we try to remove weaknesses and deficiencies you know that we have already discussed also in the last class you know uh, weaknesses is something you are not good at so building them becomes more difficult and people become defensive you know the, many people don't accept that they have the, uh, no certain weaknesses people become defenses so it is very difficult to work with weakness it can be done there is no doubt about it uh, but since strengths are already within you, these are already inbuilt capacities and uh, it is people become more open to work with your strengths, you know. It is easy to say, okay, I have this strength and I want to develop those strengths. People will be more open to uh, this, uh, you know, approach and research also shows we gain more benefits by working on our strengths and developing them as compared to just focusing on weaknesses and you know reducing those weaknesses. So, Gallup's basically the original study that they did from uh, from that uh, original study that they did uh, from there uh, basically this whole idea of uh, you know, different classification of strength came up it was on top achievers. So, some of the important findings that they uh, kind of uh, uh, they summarized from that study about top achievers. So, I will just discuss some of the main findings from the, that study. So, Clifton and Anderson uh, in 2002, they reported following main findings associated with top achievers in different fields of study. One thing uh, they found or noticed from their study is that you know top achievers fully recognize their talents and build on them to develop strengths. So, one thing was very clear from their study from their data is that the people who achieve certain successes in their, in their life or become a top achievers in different fields of their activities, they recognize their talents and refine them and make them their strength. So, that is one of the important findings they found. Underachievers often fail to recognize their talents and develop strengths. So, underachievers which are, who are not able to achieve much in their field of activity they often uh, are not able to recognize or become aware of their strengths. So, if you are not become, if you are not aware of your talents, uh, you cannot make them your strength. So, this is one finding they found, they reported. Second is, top achievers apply their greatest talents in roles that best suit them. So, they use their talent in roles that are most suitable for expression of those talents. You know, they use their talents in the appropriate context. For achievement, it is necessary to apply one's talent and strength in roles and tasks that are best suited for those talents. So, every talent has certain domain or certain areas where they can be expressed. So, there is a need for a proper fit between talent and the task is essential. So, whatever task you are doing, you know, if you have corresponding talent, then you are more likely to succeed in those tests. So, every talent will not be applicable in every context. For example, your ability to communicate could be a very important talent and uh, or strength and you may 
it is best or most suitable in context where you know you need to connect with people or teamwork or influence people to do something in those context you know if your job role is like that and if you have uh, th that kind of strengths and talent uh, you are you are more likely to get suc success in those areas so because your talent and the nature of the task that you are doing they are they fit with each other so there is a proper fit between uh, the talent and the task is essential and top achievers uh, kind of find situations and the career and the job in uh, in those contexts where you know their talents are best utilized or there is a fit between their talent and the task that they do the third uh, important finding they uh, reported is that top achievers invent ways to apply their greatest talent to their achievement of task one thing is that they invent newer ways so one thing is that uh, many people may have certain talents and strength uh, uh, but they may not be able to use them in a very creative way in all the context so uh, people who so to best utilize your talent and make them as a strength uh, people who are top achievers they find new ways to use those talents so more creatively they use their uh, you know talents and uh, so so that they become their strengths greatest strengths so it is essential to consciously invent newer ways of applying talents in various tasks one performs in a role or a position for greater achievement so the more you use them in more diverse ways you know or the chances of your success and achievement will be much better so these are uh, important findings they reported uh, by studying top achievers you know so these are uh, the most important findings one is top achievers they recognize their talent and polish those talents and make them their strengths top achievers apply uh, their talents in a role or task where it is most suitable so there is a fit between their talent and the task that they do and top achievers you know they invent newer ways more creatively uh, ways of using their greatest talent to achieve things in their life now out of this study uh, uh, just like via classification this gallop study also you know found certain number of number of strengths that are important in the context of work setting particularly and they found actually 34 talents or strength and they divided these 34 uh, talents and strength into four main domains so the four 34 talents they, uh, or strengths that they found are important and uh, all these 34 uh, strengths and talents can be you know divided into four categories or four domains one is executing strengths related to execution strength relating to influencing people strength related to relationship building ability to build relationships and strength related to strategic thinking let's see what are the important strengths associated with each of these category so executing uh, under the domain of executing uh, there are many specific strengths that you can see here so executing is about implementing a solution how do you make things happen you know execution means how do you make things happen in the reality people may have ideas but how do you implement those ideas and you know achieve your goals that is execution so that ability is called execution so there are many strengths that are associated with executing things or making things happen in the work contest or maybe in life in general so certain strengths that are associated with executing ability are achievement which connotes the idea of pursuit of goals productivity satisfaction from ac accomplishment so achievements pursuing goals and accomplishing them you know satisfactorily arrangement is another talent or strength which is about organizing things coordinating identifying the right combination of people and resources 
people who are good at arranging things, they can execute much better ways. Organization, organizing people and things around them to achieve the goals is basically called as arrangement. Belief is about having deeply held values, ideas, finding meaning in life. So, belief is always important for most of the things because if you do not believe, if you do not have belief in the first place, uh, you will not be able to do anything. So, belief about you know ideas and values that you have is very important, then only you can implement them. Consistency is about uh, you know perception of equality, fairness, guardianship of right and wrong. So, this is more related to the concept of justice that we have discussed in VIA classification. So, people with the strength of consistency, you know, uh, they have a sense of equality among people or you know, people around them, uh, they see uh, the sense of equality, fairness in whatever uh, you know, they do. The, uh, basically, it also includes the guardianship of what is right and wrong. Uh, this is also an important strength uh, associated with executing. Then comes deliberation is about good decision making, carefulness, consideration of all points. So, deliberation means you very carefully look at all the points, consider all the options you know, uh, before implementing something or making a decision. Discipline is also very important in this context of execution. It also includes organizations, good timekeeping, order and structure. So, everything in a very disciplined, ordered and structured ways you do. So, it enhances the chances of execution. Focus is another strength uh, related to determining priorities, finding direction, efficiencies, direction specific, very clear directions effi and efficiently moving towards that, determining priorities, what should be done first and then what should be done later. Then comes a uh, sense of responsibility is very important. Without responsibility, you cannot execute anything person who can be counted on, people who are responsible, you can count on them, uh, they are committed, honest, loyal people. So, these are qualities related to responsibility and for execution, these are very important strengths. Uh, the last one is restoration, it is about recognition of problems and ability to fix them. Whenever problem arises, for every execution, there will be problems, recognizing them and ability to fix them is called restoration. So, these are nine important strength associated with execution. Then under influencing, the next category or domain is influencing. Influencing about is about taking charge, speak up convincingly to others. So, influencing how you can influence other peoples, make an impact on other peoples. It includes you know ability to taking charge of the situation speaking convincingly to other people. So, these are some of the important ideas associated with influencing. So, there are many strengths associated with influencing, uh, uh, some of them are here uh, or according to them, I know these are important strengths that are associated with influencing. One is activation. To influence people, you need uh, activation is about energy to get things gone, going and down. No? You should have the energy and to kind of you know, uh, make it contagious to uh, people around you, so that you know things sh should be done and things should be you know uh, things should move. So making things happen by turning thought into actions. So activation means is this quality of very you know uh, uh, high quality of putting energy into things and you know making people around you who are involved in the task to make them energetic and activated for. You know, accomplishing the goals. Then commanding strength to command is basically ability to deal with conflicts and crisis, capacity to be, to be in charge and making decisions. Command is about capacity to, uh, know, to be in the charge and make decisions wherever it is required. Uh, so, and also its ability to deal with the conflicts and crisis situations. How to, how do you, are you able to make decisions? whenever there is a crisis. So, these are abilities or strengths related to associated with command. Communication 
is another strength associated with influencing people because it is the communication that can influence people. So, it is about explanation, clarification, no? uh, good when talking and presenting. So, your there is a clarity uh, about your communication, there is a proper explanation you are able to give. Uh, you are very good in terms of talking and giving presentation. So, these are abilities related to communication, which is connected to influencing. Competition is about uh, hard work to excel, achievement, and desire to win. So, this drive to excel, achieve, win also is connected to influencing. Maximization is about enhancement of personal and group excellence, you know you are able to maximize outputs from people and the situation from the individuals as well as group situation you are so so you are if you are able to influence people that means you are able to maximize also the output from the people and the group self assurance is about self confidence independence in thinking so if you are yourself not confident then you cannot influence people people who can influence means they are very confident on themselves. So, there is a self confidence, there, there is a sense of independent thinking, they will not be always you know dependent on others for all decisions. So, the sense of independence in thinking is also important. Significance, the next is significance is about high motivation for recognition, hard working, want to make big impact. So, people with this motivation of making big changes and impact on organizations or whatever they do uh, and lot of hard work they do for motivation and recognition. Uh, so, they have a sense of making a significant impact. So, that is also connected to uh, influencing. And the last one is Wu, which basically means quickly connecting with people, performing groups and relationships, connection with people quickly and forming relationships in the group situation is also another quality that is connected to influencing people. So, these are 8 strengths that are associated with influencing. The next category is relationship building. Uh, relationship building is, as, is basically associated with building and nurturing strong relationships. So, there are many strengths associated with building connections and relationship with people which is very important for success in life in your whatever situations you know that is very important. So, the strength associated with building relationship uh, include adaptability, adaptability basically means uh, modification of the self depending on the demands of the environment, adjustment and flexibility. So, adaptability is about your flexibility, how able you are in terms of you know adapting to different situations how able you are to change yourself according to the demands of the situation. So, that is about it. the more adaptable you are more the more the, there are bet the better chances are there uh, that you will be able to work in different situation with the different peoples and get success out of them. Then comes connectedness which is about connecting ideas or, or occurrences into meaningful whole. So, connectedness means is your ability to connect things connect ideas and making a whole or getting a whole perspective and then work towards it. So, you are able to see bits and pieces and also you are able to find wholeness. So, that is the meaning of connectedness here. Development is about seeing potential in others and assessing them in their development. So, you are able to also develop people, see the potential in other people and you are able to uh, assist people in their growth and development. So, that is also part of relationship building. Then comes empathy. Empathy is about understanding and sensing feelings of others forming supportive relationships. So, it is about you know keep uh, you know it is about you know uh, understanding others perspective what that person is how that person is looking into the world. From their perspective, you try to understand how this person is feelings and behaving. So, empathy is about that. It is very important in terms of relationship building. Without empathic understanding, you cannot make connection with people. Then comes harmony. It is about ability to find things in common, seek areas of agreement, avoiding conflicts. 
seeking harmony means you are avoiding conflicts and seeing commonalities among peoples and uh, whatever situations you are dealing with. Including is about helping others to be unified and effective and accepting others. So, it is about you know inclusion is about basically you know peop including people in an unified and effective manner, accepting people uh, for a common purpose and goal. Individuation, then the next is individuation is about seeing others as individuals and recognizing their talents, focus on how different people work together and productively. Individual capacities and strength ability to find is very important for you know, building relationships and working towards a particular goal is that many people have their own individual abilities and strengths. So, nurturing that and, uh, and uh, making them effective and work in a particular situations where there are other people is also an important quality or talent called as individual individualization. Positivity is about enthusiasm, optimism, excitement, stimulation of others. So, positive outlook, positive behavior, enthusiasm, optimism, these are all connected to also building relationships. And then comes relationships in general means forming close interpersonal relationships. So, these are the important nine strengths that are associated with relationship building. And the last one is strategic thinking. Strategic thinking is about thinking and analyzing information and situations. This ability to think, analyze information and situations and make decision accordingly is strategic thinking. Strength associated with strategic thinking includes analytical skills, which is about understanding causes and effects, critical thinking, processing informations, analyzing things. Context is about seeing historical patterns and perspective. So, for any part making decision or making any particular goals to uh, achieve, you know, you see historical patterns, how things have evolved historically and different perspective and then you take a decision. So, that ability is called contextual understanding, context. Futuristic is about focusing on the future, seeing possibilities, energizing others. So, when you do something, you also have the ability to see what is, what will be its impact in the future. So, that is also very important, no? Uh, what is the, what is the possible consequences in the future and outcomes in the futures? So, that is also related to strategic thinking. Ideation is about creativity, originality, new ideas and concepts. So, creativity, originality, novelty, these are also important in strategic thinking. Input is about active knowledge acquisition, curiosity. Input is about, you know, being curious and uh, acquiring new knowledge and then you know which is which may help in strategic thinking. Intellection is about multiple directions of thinking, intellectual discussions and solutions. This is more about intellectual abilities of processing information, uh, you know intellectual discussions, uh, finding a solution from different perspectives, multiple directions of thinking. So, these are all related to intellection. Then comes learning which is about enjoying enjoying learning process f learning process focus on improvement so that is also important part of strategic thinking if you can learn better obviously you are more likely to make strategic thinkings then comes strategy as uh, as one of the last uh, no strength is seeing pros and cons and the whole picture generating appropriate plans for actions so making strategy is about see the pros and cons of the whole picture. So, what will be the pros, what will be the cons and accordingly you generate plans and actions for particular goals uh, to achieve. So, these are 8 strengths associated with strategic thinking. So, overall we have about 34 strengths associated with these 4 uh, important domains. So, all these uh, strengths or talents, we all may have them, we may have some of them, we may have, may not have others. All these, you know, talents can be, you know, developed and, uh, you know, made them strength as our strength and we can use them for our achievement and success in life. 
So, we will now discuss how to develop these tanks. So, Clifton, uh, Clifton and Anderson provided following strategies for developing strength. One is obviously, first important thing is know your talents. As we have already seen uh, from the uh, survey results on top achievers, that top achievers are aware of their talents. So, first you need to be aware that you have certain types of talents. It could be talents of communication, it could be talent of empathy, it could be talent of you know, relationship building, whatever it is. First, knowing them is very important. For identifying is uh, what, what are your greatest talents is very important. Your, you can identify your talents by spontaneous reactions, yearnings, rapid learnings and satisfaction. Spontaneous reactions means what? Spontaneous reactions are subconscious uh, reactions in a given situation. Many times, you know, many times in a situation we will respond to situations. So, those spontaneous response also sometimes gives us information, okay, okay, uh, you may some, sometimes get surprised, okay, I am good at doing these particular things. Suddenly, you, you know, uh, get engaged in a sport, let us say, and you suddenly find you are good at this particular sport. So, spontaneous, you know, reactions in a particular situation also give you information, okay, I am good at these things, so I have this talent. Sometimes automatically you can find out from reactions in the different environment. Then comes yearnings also you can find uh, what are your talents. Yearnings are basically passions for some activities and hobbies. Some people are very passionate for doing something. You cannot become passionate about something if you are not good at it. So, whatever hobbies and uh, you know things that you love to do, you have certain strength associated with them. So, you can identify your strength from your yearnings and passions and hobbies that you pursue. From there you can identify, okay, these are the important talents that I have and I enjoy doing them. <coughs> Another thing is rapid learning, rapidly learning. Sometimes, you know, in certain areas of life, you can find out yourself, I am learning in this particular area very rapidly, you know. I can get things very quickly in this particular area, whatever it is. Let us say you are a student of engineering and uh, let us say you join an engineering program and uh, you can understand very quickly all the concepts related to engineering. So, one thing is very clear, you have a, you have a kind of aptitude and talent for understanding engineering concepts because you are learning them very rapidly. So, it shows you have talent in those, those areas. So, from rapid learning also is an area that reflects your talents. If you can learn rapidly, it reflects your talents in those areas. And the last one is satisfaction. Satisfaction and employ enjoyment of activities also reflects possible talent in those areas. So, if you find satisfied after doing some activities uh, or you know or you enjoy doing certain activities, you know this also reflects that there is possible talents associated with those activities where you enjoy and you feel satisfaction. So, these are some of the ways by which you can identify your talents from your spontaneous reactions, from your passions and hobbies, from areas where you learn rapidly and uh, from the activities that you uh, find satisfaction after doing them. So, some of this, this is, these are some of the ways to identify talents. Also, you know strength finder uh, questionnaire is there which is available in their website of Gallup website uh, that can also help you to reflect on yourself and find out what are the strength that you have. Self reflections on thoughts and behaviors can give insights into talents. Obviously, always if you reflect on yourself and analyze your behaviors, you can find out what are the things in which you are you know good at and what are the talents that you have and you can polish them into your strengths. So, one thing is know your talents. Second is you must value your talents and assume responsibility for using them. Many people may have many talents, but most of the talents may go waste uh, because they are not valuing them, they are not utilizing them, you know. So, many creative people, you know, they have lot of talents, but they are not able to use them as your as their strength and they simply, you know, get distracted into many other things and whole talent goes waste. So, it is possible that, you know, people may have many talents, uh, but valuing them is important, you know. You need to invest time, energy and resources for developing those strengths. Otherwise, you know, they will not be refined. So, strengths are refi refining of your talents. So, once you identify you have certain talents, you need to refine them you know, by investing time, energy, effort, resources, 
then only they will become your strength. Third is talents are most powerful when inspired by a personal mission. When you use your talents in a direction where it is your personal mission of your life, then obviously you have the highest motivation to develop them. So, the use of talents uh, are when they are used towards the mission, personal mission, purpose and meaning of your life that will energize and motivate you to develop and refine talents into strengths. So, if you use them into the accomplishing your life missions, uh, then obviously, you will have much more motivation to develop them and uh, you know refine them into your strengths. For example, you, know, you may uh, have a mission in a particular organization to achieve certain goals using your team. So, you may have certain talents or where well, no, you may have you may be very empathetic, you may have a lot of good leadership qualities, you have good communication skills. So, because you are highly motivated to achieve this particular target, you will you are more likely to use all these talents to move people, influence people and achieve those goals, because it is connected with your certain important achievements of your life. So, without a mission and purpose in life, one may not have enough motivation to develop talents into strengths. Sometimes it is always good, you know, if you have certain missions and certain uh, know, meaning in your life, connect your strength in achieving those missions, that will help you to make your talents into strengths. Fourth one is healthy caring relationships facilitate development of strengths. So, in any every domains of your life, you know if you have caring loving people around you, they will always facilitate your growth. So, they in this context also, if you have some caring and loving people who understand you, it could be your family, your friend circle, whatever it is, they can also help you to facilitate your development of your talent and you know making them your strength. So, having few healthy positive empowering relationship facilitates development of strengths, uh, they may inspire to develop your strengths uh, and you are more likely to talk about your talents when you have people you know caring people around you. So, you will be more likely to talk them, express about your experiences and plans about developing talents, receiving feedback, working together to form an expectation about talents, where to apply and how to develop them. So, because we always talk to people about our plans and ideas and if you have people uh, who are there is a positive relationships and caring people, it will facilitate and they will inspire you promote your development of your strengths and whenever there is a failure and issues, they will help you to come out of that and you know and motivate you to uh, move towards that. Fifth is uh, relieving your success helps you to develop strengths. Relieving your success, whatever successes you, you might have achieved in your past by using your strength, then you can relieve them, remember them, that also kind of helps you to motivate you to use them more and achieve, uh, achieve more into your life. So, success generally comes with the usage of talent. So, most of the success whenever we have achieved in our life, it is because we have used our talents and strengths. So, th sometimes therefore, relieving them uh, helps you to recognize your talents kind of it you know gives you more energy and more focus on your talents and give you confidence to using them you know because you have succeeded using them in the past so you will get more confidence of using them in the future sixth is practice your talent obviously you know it is true for any areas of life there is no alternative to practice when you want to develop strengths or anything in our life for learning for uh, for anything practice has no alternative. So, if you have certain talents or strength, use them more and more, apply them more and more into your life, into different contexts, different goals, achievement of different goals. The more you use them, the more likely that you know, you will develop your talents into strengths. And the last one is teaching also sometimes leads you learning, you know. Sometimes if you have certain talents, you can teach those skills and talents. Uh, and your strengths that you have developed out of your life experience, if you can teach them to others, that also helps you because you get feedback from other people and you see other people, that also you know helps you to develop more and more because you will share your own ideas and insights and reflect on them, that will also make them uh, you know make uh, uh, your talents, you know you will focus on your talents much more way, much more better way. 
uh, while you teaching teach it to others and this will give more insights and help you to you know facilitate developing your own strengths so teaching others about talents and sharing your experiences and insights will facilitate development of your own strengths uh, you will be forced to gain you know insights by reflecting and explaining about them so while teaching you need to reflect on them you know uh, talk about them so that will also facilitate development of your own strength also so these are some of the ideas uh, by which you can uh, you know develop your talents nourish your talents and make them your strength of your life and help and this strength can help you to achieve your life goals and make your life more you know satisfactory satisfactory and more you know uh, it will lead a life of more fulfillment so at least this is the what research shows so these are some of the important ideas associated with strengths so we had two lectures in the one lecture we have discussed vi a classification system of character strengths and in today's lecture we talked about gallops strength finder where we talked about uh, strength in terms of talents and how to develop them so with this i end today's lecture thank you